This is Sogom Durman, one of the most iconic marketplaces in the capital, if not the country. It used to be this bustling site of people pouring out of storefronts that have been owned for generations. And this is what's left of it. Bullet holes through buildings, shelled balconies, bullet cases in, on the floor, unexploded ordnance. It's just a wasteland. Unbelievable to think that this is what's left of a place that many people from Sudan remember so fondly. Well, for more on this, uh, I'm joined by Sir William Patey, former British ambassador to Sudan. Um, thanks so much for, for joining us, um, Sir William. I mean, 10 months in, we're, we're saying uh, are things as bad as uh, a resolution to this uh, as far off as at any point in those 10 months or not? Well, it seems there's no resolution. Various mediation efforts for the United States with the Saudi government, uh, uh, that was that failed. Then the East African organization, EGAD, the Intergovernmental Authority, uh, tried to mediate, um, and the um, the army broke um, uh, broke relations and have pulled out of EGAD uh, because the EGAD gave Hemeti, the rebel leader, the same sort of status. So mediation efforts up to now have have failed. And as far as I'm aware, there are none that are ongoing. Are, are there any major Western countries that are trying to, to change things here that have roots there or, or not? You mentioned Saudi Arabia there. Who else? Well, I mean, the, the problem is, and I give credit to Sky News for drawing attention to the ongoing conflict in, in Sudan and the humanitarian consequences of that conflict, but it's it's the forgotten war. I think all the oxygen has been sucked out of international diplomacy by the events in Gaza and, to a lesser extent, Ukraine, and nobody's really focusing on Khartoum or on, on Sudan. What, what, what uh, at heart are the, the, the various sides fighting about? I mean, is it as simple as a, uh, as a sort of rush for power or are there more complex uh, aspects uh, at play, if, if you're able to sum that up in, in an answer? Well, it's, it's a power struggle, certainly. Uh, both sides uh, were instrumental in overthrowing the, uh, the previous military regime of Omar Bashir in, in 2019. There was a brief hope that there would be a civilian transition uh, backed by the, the, the military, the army, and by the RSF, which is basically a, a militia force that had been created by uh, Omar Bashir, uh, there was some brief hope that, that there would be a transition to a civilian government. That then failed with both the army and the RSF combining to bring about a, a renewed military dictatorship, and then they've fallen out. Uh, and now this is a naked, uh, a, a, a naked pursuit of power. There's not really any ideology involved here. This is the RSF wanting to uh, run the country and... Uh, they have a they have a terrible history in Darfur and uh, genocide in Darfur, so they're hardly the right people to run the country. How how critical is this country to uh, Western interests? Uh, I mean, I think we can bring up a map whilst we whilst we answer this question. But the, given its location, its size, uh, its resources, how, how important is it? Well, it's a huge country. It's on the Red Sea, just opposite Yemen and Saudi Arabia. So, if it, if it you know, fell into, uh, it became a failed state uh, and was host to groups that we see in Somalia and Yemen, then you know, uh, hopes for stability in the Red Sea and the passage of uh, of shipping through the Red Sea w would be further further diminished. So, it's very important. It has, uh, it's the transit for oil from uh, the Republic of South Sudan. It's very uh, close to Egypt. The Egyptian army is supporting it. Um, it's, it's not strategic beyond the, the Red Sea, but it's a large country, and uh, we have a huge diaspora here in the UK, uh, and the prospect of millions of more refugees fleeing the war-torn country should make it an area of concern for us. Um, uh, just to broaden out, Sir William, you mentioned... Uh opposite uh, across the Red Sea, Saudi Arabia, you were also ambassador there, also ambassador to Iraq and uh, uh, and to Afghanistan. I wanted to ask you about the, the latest in, in the Middle East more broadly, and, and in particular, the prospect of a ground invasion, a broad ground invasion from Israel into, into Rafah. Do you think that that would be a line crossed on behalf of Prime Minister Netanyahu that would really lose him support of, of, of Western allies if that did take place? 
I'm not sure it'd be a red line. I think those lines were crossed a long time ago. 28,000 civilians killed in in Gaza. Uh, you, we saw attacks on Khan Yunus, which was a refugee camp. Um, so I think uh, Western leaders give uh, the Israeli government a bit more leeway than they would give other governments. Uh, I, I can't conceive of how the Israeli army can uh, conduct an operation against Hamas in uh, in Rafah without a tremendous loss of life on the part of the Palestinian civilians. Uh, at the end of the day, this war will have to come to an end and there will have to be some form of settlement. Uh, if we're to bring peace to the Middle East, the only way of uh, resolving some of the myriad interlinked issues in the Middle East is if we solve this issue, and at least the President Biden and, and, and the government are talking about uh, the day after a two-state solution. It's hard to see the President, present uh, Israeli government with their very right-wing allies uh, agreeing to that, but the Israelis will have to decide that the only way for their security is to live in peace with Palestinians, having marginalized a terrorist organization like Hamas. Um, I'm interested in your take on the role Saudi Arabia is, is playing in all of this. I mean, it was reported last week that in order to get some or close to another um, hostage deal and, and ceasefire agreed, uh, one of the carrots offered to Israel was reigniting what was agreed in the Abraham Accords in 2020, one of some form of normalisation of relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Is that Saudi Arabia offering a lot and and how significant is it if that does all all come together well i mean saudi arabia was offering normalization uh, with israel to uh, recognize israel as a state uh, to deal with it as a normal middle eastern country to integrate it into the middle east to join the abraham accords the uae and uh, bahrain uh, and other countries have already um, uh, basically normalized relations with Israel, although the situation in Gaza has complicated that. And Saudi Arabia's uh, price for that was a, a, a closer security relationship with the United States, but also some progress on a Palestinian state. Um, and these things are, you know, uh, would all, are all on the cards. Uh, the pres President Biden is, has laid it out that the US supports a two-state solution how we get there is a very, a very dif di diff difficult question, but I think Saudi Arabia will be part of that solution and part of that answer.